Hey friends, hope you're well. Back here again with another GAMSAT video. Today I'm going to give you guys a bit of a breakdown on the components and the understanding of how I study for the GAMSAT and how I ultimately think you guys can best study for the GAMSAT to give yourself the best preparation and the best chance to perform well when the day comes. Let's get into it. Today I've got three points to really run you guys through which I ultimately think are the highest yield for you guys to be able to systematically develop a bit of a framework that will give you guys the best potential and the best opportunity to actually do well on the game site, come whenever you're seeing it. If you guys haven't seen my last video based around prepping for the game site and the best way to actually get yourself in the right mindset to do well, please check it out after this because I think it'll be a really big benefit to you guys. Point one. Now, as you guys are aware, the GAMSAT is trying to gauge your understanding of complex information and the interpretation of a set amount of facts in a limited amount of time. They're going to present this info that pertains to a specific topic and then create their own rules regarding it and expect it to extrapolate from that in order to derive a conclusion and find an answer. It's important to recognize that although prior knowledge is useful, it's actually this critical thinking skills associated with the study and the concepts that you're learning that the game's actually really trying to test and ultimately is what's gonna help you get the marks you need and get a good grade come the day. Like, say if you're not that great at maths, and this is actually something that I also did leading up to it, to kind of really cement those, you know, those formulaic rearrangement and um, just that critical thinking and that math reasoning skills that are necessary to get in. I actually found a bunch of online resources that specifically targeted a specific maths topic, whether it's like dimensional analysis or log rules. And I would sit down and I would just work through those questions nonstop. Like, Sure, they may have been pretty easy, or they may not have been that difficult, and they're probably not really relevant, but it's those skills and it's those getting used to the concepts and the formulas and the rules that are associated with those equations that's actually going to give you the skills and the ability to translate that into the games that day and ultimately just make it so much easier when it comes around. Like, for example, there are so many online resources out there, like really utilize them and really make the most of them when studying and when prepping for your games because they're there for you, um, you may as well make the most of them and try and get as much out of it as you can. It's really important and I think this is something that a lot of people miss and don't really think about when leading up to it, is that you have to ensure that you're prioritizing a critical understanding of the questions. You have to be able to recognize if you've got this question wrong, Ah uh, well, if you got this question right, that's great, but know why you got it right and if your reasoning was flawed or if it actually made sense and explains why you got the answer that you did. So ASA actually give you explanations of the questions at the end of their booklets. However, sometimes they're not very hashed out and they don't really give you a clear explanation as to what the correct answer was in their eyes. Again, coming back to these uh, free resource utilization, there are two YouTube channels that actually go through and point by point move through each question. So if you've got a question right and you're not sure why, or you've got a question wrong and you're not sure why, after going through the ASAR explanation, after looking at it yourself, hop onto these YouTube channels. They're the Gold Standard YouTube channel and the Ace Gamsat YouTube channel. So again, these are two free resources that I utilized extensively throughout my study for both Gamsats. And although sometimes they might be very sharp and straight to the point, they're two unique perspectives on how to answer a question, which one of them just might click with you. Like I couldn't tell you the amount of times I looked at a question on Gold's Gamsat and didn't understand it very well. But I looked at the explanation on the Ace Gamsat YouTube channel and all of a sudden, click, bam, I've got it, I understand it. And like, that's the thing. There are so many different ways to tackle the questions on this test to actually derive a correct answer. If YouTube channels aren't really your thing and you want to break it down yourself, that's great because that's probably a better way to actually grasp an internal understanding because you're also learning a concept as well. So what I do, if I, I look over a question and if I didn't entirely get it or understand it, I try and figure out what topic or what concept it's trying to test us on. So whether it's organic cam, cam like stereoisomers or whatever, I then study stereoisomers for like a couple of hours and I go through it and I learn all the bits and pieces or at least the parts that were important or necessary for that question, then come back and see with this new knowledge if I understand it after that. Point two, 
I reckon this is probably going to be the biggest part of the video and also the most important. So if you skip the first part or you skip the end part, whatever, I don't care. But if you really want to get something out of this, I think you should definitely sit tight and listen to this because it's definitely going to be worthwhile. Now, I can't stress enough the importance of a schedule. Now, a schedule puts the onus on you to actually put in the hard yards to consistently get the work done in a timely manner and when necessary and scheduled to do so. Consistency is really key here, okay? So if you're studying a concept, work on it a little bit every day. Every time you do something is a 1% increment towards the goal and ultimately overall comprehension of a topic you're trying to learn or just any goal in general for that matter. Now, it's this consistency that develops a reward cycle that creates a feedback loop that actually makes you want to continue with the habit. And I'll touch on that in just a second. But relying on motivation is a complete myth. It doesn't happen. It's impractical and does not lead to an overall generation of results. We're habitual creatures and we benefit from acting so. So there was actually this study done just last year in 2020 by Van der Weyden et al., that followed a bunch of participants and asked them to carry out a self-chosen behavior consistently over a period of time. And they actually found that the participants that carried out their behavior consistently and regularly actually showed a stronger formation of that habit. So if we tie it all together, if we've got stronger association with a habit that becomes automatic over time through consistently performing it, which also aligns with our long-term goals, surely to me, that sounds like a pretty good trajectory towards success. Now, there's this book, right, called Atomic Habits by James Clear. <laughs> and it is probably one of the most influential books of my entire life. I think I read this about a year or so ago, and it's honestly changed my life ever since. He manages to frame habits into a way that structures your days into a consistent expecting regime that builds upon a set of rules that rewards hard work with activities of calm and joy set by you for to do whatever you want to do. Now this book, since I read it probably about a year ago, completely changed my life entirely. And it's probably the basis and the whole foundation around creating a routine that allows you to study effectively and consistently to actually get the benefit and achieve those results that you want and that change and that growth to help you do well on the GAMSAT and do the best that you possibly can when it comes around. And he actually talks about habits in a way that is formulated around tricking your mind into wanting to do a task so that we can achieve the reward afterwards. Now he states that it's actually more important to focus on the system rather than the actual results. Because as he mentions in the book, your outcomes are a lagging measure of your habits. So in the book, he actually describes the formation of a habit based around this four factor positive feedback loop. So point one is to make it obvious. Point two is to make it attractive. Point three, make it easy. And point four, point four, make it satisfying. So making it obvious is actually simply that, making it obvious, you know, stating the exact nature of what you're gonna do, how you're gonna do it, and when you are going to do it, so that it's right there, clear in front of you, and you know what you have to do. Making it attractive involves actually building up that anticipation for the reward after completing your task, which drives up your dopamine, therefore further increasing the desire to actually want to complete the task so that you can get that reward, whatever it may be, at the end. Making it easy refers to making the habit that you want to grow and sustain the most accessible action at all times whenever you want to get what you need to do done. Like, we're lazy creatures, right? So through eliminating the friction to achieve good tasks, such as laying out all your work and putting all your clothes out ready to go for study the next day actually increases the likelihood of that happening. And it goes the other way as well. So by increasing the friction for bad behaviors actually decreases the likelihood of them distracting us or us choosing them over something that we probably should be doing instead. So now making it satisfying actually revolves around creating that reward that will help drive your anticipation to complete the task further in the future. 
Now, can you see how that kind of lines back up with make it attractive? Because through creating a reward that you actually want and desire, that attractiveness builds your desire to complete the task in the first place so that you can reach that reward at the end of it when it's complete. So I hope you guys can see how through by implementing this framework and principles into your study regime in the months leading up to the GAMSAT, it actually allows you to work in an environment and cultivate this feeling of increased knowledge and uh, contribution so that you can actually perform at the, your ultimate maximum potential on the GAMSAT on the day and get the result you want and hopefully get into med. Essentially, the whole principle that this framework flows around is this cardinal rule of behavior change, which states that behavior that is immediately rewarded will be repeated, whereas behavior that is immediately punished will be avoided. So for me, after finishing this book, I felt completely empowered. Like, I learned so much, and this has ultimately changed my life forever. Like, it has allowed me to understand the processes required to learn a new skill, and it's exactly what I used in my study routine and my timetable to allow myself the time and the energy allocated to studying so that I could do the best I could in the GAMSAT and achieve the results that I wanted to get into med. So essentially, read the book. <laughs> great book, great read, and you'll get so much out of it, I guarantee it. So if you find that you've got your routine right and you're all set, but you're really struggling to get rid of your distractions, go back to that friction stage in making it easy where set everything out organized and ready to go but if you're struggling with your distractions with your phone or your laptop or whatever study in a different room go to a library or put your phone in a different room because that's going to deter you enough to not want to get up and look at your phone because then you have to get out walk all the way out there to look at your phone and then walk all the way back and you're going to be much more inclined to stay in your seat and just keep working for the allocated time that you've got and then you can go and look at your phone to your heart's delight. So the way I structured my timetable leading up to the exam both times was that I got a table on Word, wrote out all the times. So I'd say I'd study from games at 9 to 12. Then I'd have a break, 12 to 3. And then I'd study the games at 3 to 6. And I printed that out and I put it on my wall so that I was accountable every day when I woke up for what I was doing, when I was doing it, and how often it happened throughout the day. This really helped reinforce this whole idea of habits because every day when I woke up, I knew exactly what I was doing, when I was doing it, and when I had that reward, and then when that habit would start up again. So then when I went to sleep at night, I already knew that I was waking up at 8, 8.30 because I had to start at 9. And at 9 o'clock, I already had everything laid out from the night before, and all I would do is sit down and start straight away. This actually overall made me more efficient and I got so much more done in those little specific blocks than I would have if I had have worked eight hours straight. All right guys, final point, point three. So ultimately guys, all the power here is on you. There's nobody here psyching you up. There's nobody gonna be there to pick you up when you fall. You are entirely responsible for your own actions. Now, it sounds scary, right? But honestly, it should be exhilarating. It should reinstill you with this sense of like purpose and confidence to actually go out there, achieve what you want to achieve and realize your true potential and your goals at the end of the day. So please don't be discouraged if you're not getting the results you need or you're not performing as well as you'd like. Just remember that if you utilize these skills and you maintain that consistency and that framework and that strong organization and that power of your own time, if it's aligned with your true goals that you're really, really striving for, you will get there. So there we have it, guys. Just remember that consistency is key here, okay? Little increments over a long period of time are going to be so much more worthwhile and beneficial than barraging your life with endless, intense hours of study for eight hours a day nonstop for months leading up to the exam. So don't let it consume your life, okay? Because that is the number one way that you're going to fatigue yourself and burn yourself out and you're just going to be absolutely exhausted when you sit the test. Don't lose contact with your social life. Don't lose contact with your friends. Get out and exercise. Eat well, sleep well. And ultimately, that's the way you're going to give yourself the best chance to perform at your best when it comes around. All right, so hopefully you guys got something out of this video. And if you really want me to make more videos like this in the future, please hit that like and subscribe button down the bottom because it really does allow me to make more content and I genuinely appreciate it. If you've got a video idea or a topic that you'd like me to explore, please leave a comment down the bottom and I'll be sure to give it a sus. All right, guys, until next time.
See you later. Making it easy. Now making it easy, easy. Now making it, making it easy, easy. Making it easy, easy. Making it easy, making it easy, ref easy.